I'm not gonna lie. This is probably the coolest damn image I've ever seen. When I first laid eyes on this, I was absolutely speechless. We hear a lot about exoplanets detected using indirect means like the transit method and measurements of a star's gravitational wobble. And we see plenty of artistic representations of what those extreme worlds might look like. But to actually see a system from a distance is something else entirely. That's right. We're talking about the first image ever taken of a sun-like star and her exoplanets. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Get. What we're looking at is history. The first ever image taken of a sun-like star and two exoplanets orbiting from a great distance away. Let that sink in for a moment. The image was taken by the European Space Observatory using the Very Large Telescope, which also photographed this stunning image of a planetary system being born. It's worth it to note that there have been a handful of images taken of exoplanets before this one, but rarely is there more than one planet. And none of the stars those worlds have orbited are like the ones in our system, until now. Not too long ago, it was suggested that planets like the Earth are actually quite rare. Of the 4,000 exoplanets we have observed through various means, very few of those seem to be Earth-like. And if they are similar to Earth in composition, many of them are classified as super-Earths, which is a rocky planet ranging from twice the size of our planet to about the size of Neptune or Uranus. Sadly, it was beginning to look like the rare Earth hypothesis might have actually been right. But in July of 2020, when the world was still dealing with a raging pandemic, we got this first glimpse at a system that is remarkably similar to our own, and one that is 300 light years away from us. The star, called TYC 8998-760-1, is located in the constellation Musca, and is only 17 million years old. This means that even as we gaze upon this system, effectively peering back 300 years in time, we're looking at a system that is extremely early in its stellar evolution. The two planets orbit at a distance of 160 and 320 times the distance of the Earth from the Sun, much further than Jupiter and Saturn. To put this in perspective, Voyager 1 just recently flew past the magnetic boundary marking the end of our solar system, and these two worlds are still further from their star than that. But these planets are much larger than any of the gas giants in our system. The inner one is 16 times more massive than Jupiter, and the outer one is 6 times more massive. Additionally, since rocky worlds are much smaller than gas giants, it's possible that there are more worlds left to be discovered around this star. As if these discoveries weren't enough to set the pants of every astronomer and science fiction writer on fire with excitement, another bombshell announcement was just around the corner. In October of 2020, it was announced that new observations had been made based off of data obtained from the Kepler Space Telescope about the abundance of Earth-like worlds in our galaxy. NASA's Ames Research Center suggests, based off the big picture painted by this data, that of the 200 million Sun-like stars in our galaxy, as much as half of them could harbor Earth-like worlds. And that's using conservative estimates, too. The team, led by Steve Bryson, poured over the Kepler telescope's observations. Kepler operated between 2008 and 2018, confirming the existence of 2,800 exoplanets. Researchers are still digging through its vast stores of observational data, too, and plenty of worlds hang in limbo until they can be confirmed as exoplanets. The team is also mapping billions of stars and cataloging their stellar properties. Earth-like planets can range from half to 1.5 times the size of our home, and sun-like stars must be within the threshold of 4,527 and 6,027 degrees Celsius. The habitable zones around these stars also had to be factored in, and Bryce's team took into account both a conservative distance from the surface of a system's host star and a much more optimistic one. The concept of a habitable zone, or a Goldilocks zone as some call it, is a region beyond a star where life is possible. In our system, it's thought that Venus, Earth, and Mars are the only planets in the region, but some scientists also suggest that Earth is the only one. Bryce had this to say on the new findings. 
Kepler already told us there were billions of planets, and we now know a good chunk of those planets might be rocky and habitable. Though this result is far from the final value, and water on a planet's surface is only one of many factors to support life, it's extremely exciting that we calculated these worlds are this common with such high confidence and precision. Based off of this statement, it's possible that we could see this number increase exponentially as more worlds are confirmed by his team. But while knowing how many potential Earth-like worlds could exist in our solar system is a huge deal, we'll still need more data to confirm whether those worlds are actually habitable. And that's where the importance of direct imaging comes in. Direct images of exoplanets are rare, but they're extremely important to our understanding of the way these systems work. And the researchers at the ESO suggest that they are invaluable tools for discerning if a world might be capable of hosting life. Visual confirmations of these systems will teach us about how these worlds form, how they behave, and will give us invaluable data that will be absolutely crucial before we can send probes to those systems. And while it may seem like a pipe dream to some, there is a project which might see unmanned probes launch to other systems in the near future. Breakthrough Starshot is a project by Breakthrough Initiatives that plans to send extremely lightweight probes into the depths of interstellar space. These probes would weigh less than one gram and would be blasted by freaking lasers to Alpha Centauri at 20% the speed of light. Alpha Centauri is 4.4 light years away from us, and the team behind Breakthrough Starshot estimates that their probes would probably reach their destination in just 20 years. The project still needs to overcome some hurdles, like slowing the probe down once it reaches its destination and developing a battery for their microprobe that can power its internal systems for the length of the journey. But getting a craft up to 20% the speed of light would be an immense accomplishment, even for such a small device. While Breakthrough Starshot probably wouldn't be visiting the system imaged, it could be used to survey other exoplanets closer to us. And while 20 years might seem like a long wait, the New Horizons probe that photographed Pluto and Charon took almost 10 years to reach its destination. And if Breakthrough Starshot is successful, could we see the direct images of Proxima Centauri, another member of the Alpha Centauri system, as well as its exoplanets? If you enjoyed this video, drop me a like and let me know what your reaction was to the stunning image of these exoplanets. And be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a Science Get episode. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.